Okay, we have here today a really interesting integral from the UNSW Integration B 2020, problem A2. We have the integral from 0 to 2 of sine squared pi absolute value x minus 1 over 2 dx. Okay, I really like this problem, but there are a lot of little details in this. I think there's probably a faster way. I think there's probably some shortcuts that could get us through it faster. But I thought the details of this were really interesting. I just kind of wanted to over explain it. So to get started with this, I'm really going to just focus on absolute value of x minus 1. Now the way we can deal with absolute value is we can deal with it in two cases. We can look at this as what happens when x minus 1 is, let's say, greater than 0. Or I should say x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Well, in this case, we're saying it's always positive, so then we can just drop the absolute value. So in this case, the absolute value of x minus 1 is just going to be x minus 1. And then we'll look at the other case, which is just when x minus 1 is less than 0. And in that case, we can just reverse the sign. And we can write this as minus this, or we can just kind of write it like 1 minus x. But taking this, I can write x minus 1 greater than 0 as x greater than or equal to 1. And then here, I can write this as x less than 1. So what this allows me to do is break up our bounds of the integral on 1 and split this into two integrals. So for this first integral, we'll integrate from... 0 to 1. Now that's this case here, is in this whole region, x is less than 1. So we'll use this value and just rewrite everything. So we'll have sine squared pi this 1 minus x over 2. And then for the rest of the integral, we'll integrate from 1 to 2. But we'll use this value, x minus 1, because from 1 to 2, we're always greater than 1. This is always positive, And so we'll just use this. But then from here, I want to just look at this term right here and just work on this. So if I rewrite this, I'm going to just make a subtle change. For x minus 1, I'm just going to reverse the sign on that, 1 minus x. But I don't want to change it, so I'm going to bring a minus out front. And then actually with this sine squared, I'm going to put the square around the whole thing. But then now what we have is we've got a minus sign on the angle of sine, but sine's an odd function. So what that allows me to do is, because sine's an odd function, I can just bring the minus in front of the whole thing. And I can write this as minus sine of this, which is pi 1 minus x over 2. And this whole thing is squared. But now, because we have a minus sign and we're squaring the whole thing, if you look at that as minus 1 squared, well, that's just 1. So this minus sign can just go away, and we're just left with this. But now I can take this and just plug this back into my integral here and rewrite it. But then the thing to notice here is, in our first integral, this value, and now this value in our second integral, these are exactly the same. So what that allows me to do is put my integral back together, and now we can integrate again from 0 to 2. So now I put this back together, and we just have this as one integral. What I'm going to do here is really not much. I'm going to actually just distribute in this pi over 2 into this to just rewrite this in a different form. So how I'll do it is we'll write this from 0 to 2 sine squared, and then we'll write it as pi over 2 minus pi over 2 x dx. And then from here, I think I want to try a u substitution, but I'm going to need more space for that. Okay, now from here, I think this is kind of an optional step. I'm just doing it to clean things up, but I want to do a u substitution. By making a u substitution here, I can try to set up the complementary angle formula for sine. So let's just do this and see how it goes. So I'm going to say my u is going to be pi over 2 times x. I can actually solve for x real easy and write x as 2 over pi u. Take a derivative and our dx value is going to be just 2 over pi du. Taking a 2, plugging in here, the 2's just cancel and our upper bound becomes pi. Plugging 0 in here, we just get a 0 for the lower bound. Then we'll just rewrite things so we'll have sine squared pi over 2 just stays the same. Then this piece over here becomes u. Our dx becomes 2 over pi du, but what I'm going to do is take the 2 over pi and just bring it out front. But now, like I said earlier, this is going to allow me to use the complementary angle formula for sine. So we have this formula over here to the right that just tells us that sine pi over 2 minus u is going to give us cosine of u. So what I'm going to do is just rewrite again. We'll have our 2 over pi here. So doing this, we're just going to end up with cosine squared u du. But then for this, we'll just use our power reduction formula. So we'll still have this 2 over pi here. And then I'm going to write this as 1 half. 1 plus cosine 2u du. But then these twos are going to cancel here, and we're set up to integrate this thing. So this is going to be 1 over pi. Integrating here, this is going to give me u plus, this is going to be just sine 
to u over u, and we just need to evaluate from zero to pi. Next, we just wanna plug things in and evaluate this. So we'll have our one over pi here. Then plugging pi in, it's just gonna give me pi plus, sine of two pi is just zero, so that's gonna be zero. Then plugging in zero, that gives me a zero there. Sine at zero, that's just another zero. So all this stuff's going away. This is going away. So all we're left with is one pi times pi. And so our solution to this is just one. Anyway, kind of a crazy problem and a good excuse for me to use a bunch of trig identities. So that's all I got for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.